Scientific proof that's backing up that uh, spiritual enlightenment comes from our pineal gland, known as the third eye, and depicted as ancients as the seat of the soul. And here with more is spiritual coach, Ronnie Hatchwell. Coach, mentor, all of the above. Hi, Ronnie. Hi. This is so cool. You sent me this video yeah. like a few weeks ago, and it really kind of put it together in a way that, you know, we've talked about, people have talked about, we're, it's such a massive time of change and enlightenment. Absolutely. What does that mean and how does the, you know, the pineal gland kind of assist us in that process? Well, we're going through an evolution right now, you know, I mean, human beings aren't meant to stand on, in the same place. But um, we were being used to using our five senses up till now and it's very limiting because, you know, we see, we smell, we hear, but what? So the pineal gland is actually, uh, it's located in the middle down here and it correlates to what we call the third eye. You can't see the third eye, but it's what we call the sixth sense. That means that it's seeing beyond what the five senses see. And uh, what's happened is that, I mean, this is a secret that they've known in ancient Egypt. They know it in the Vatican. You, everywhere you go in the Vatican, you see this. Pine, pine. Right, and no one right. knew what it was. Yeah. I want to continue this because we actually have a clip from this video talking about just this. It's fascinating. Amazing. Fascinating. Yeah. Many ancient esoteric traditions and mystical schools knew of the potential of the pineal. The ancient Greeks believed it to be our connection to the realms of thought. Buddhists know it as a symbol of spiritual awakening. In Hinduism, the pineal connects with the third eye chakra, the seat of intuition and clairvoyance. Jesus proclaimed that the eye is the lamp of the body, so then if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. If Rene Descartes is right, and the pineal gland is indeed the seed of the human soul, then these traditions are correct in believing that it serves as the connecting link between the physical and spiritual worlds. Fascinating. Amazing. It's fascinating. And why has science, like Western science, had a hard, such a hard time kind of saying, okay, there's something to this? Well, because somebody who deals in the spirit just has to say, I've had an experience, and right. he believes it, and he doesn't have to prove anything. A scientist has to prove it. He has to say, look, I can see it. It's here. I'm holding it. It's tangible. But what, what's happened now is that science has come to a point where it has to start correlating what the spiritual world has been saying all along because they've reached a standpoint. That's what quantum physics is, you know. We say a mirror, you know, what I give out comes back to me. So they have to show a mirror, light going on it and coming back. They have to prove it. Um, it's not that they're behind. It's just that they need to understand. Spirit, spiritualism doesn't have to understand. It only needs to experience. And know. And know. But the yeah. knowingness comes from a belief that lives within you. You right. already have it. You come in with it and you're open to it. This whole thing about the pineal gland or the third eye is to show us that there is a law, and we're going to keep talking about this law every, every spot, <laughs> there's a law of surrender. I can't get to that space of the sixth sense if I don't surrender what I think I know because that keeps me in a space that doesn't allow me to know anything else. But if I want to really know the truth, I have to be mindless and I have to be open to receive. And in that receiving space, I'm not looking at something the way I usually look at. I'm not looking at you through my five senses. I'm looking at you to know that you're part of me. Whatever I see in you is in me. Right. We're one. And that's where we're going to. And you can see the destruction of everything that's happening now in, the, in our world is leading us to show that those old laws don't work anymore. Right. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Now, how do we explain this in a way to people that, you know, are not, you know, in the middle of a real conscious spiritual process? Like, what does it mean in practical terms? Like, how can people, like, access it in a way that, you know, novices in this process, okay. so to speak? Well, the first thing somebody has to ask himself is what I really want in life, because we all want to be happy. Right? Mm -hmm. And everything that we do in our lives is to receive a feeling. We actually pay a lot of money to receive a feeling. We want to buy a new car because we want to receive a feeling. But guess what happens? After you have that thing that you bought, you want the next thing. So it's the happiness that you want. What if you could feel that before you actually go and do something? Mm -hmm. So now the reason is that we can is because it actually is in me. Because nobody puts a feeling in me, it takes it out of me. So the reason is that if I get to that space where I'm willing to be happy just because I can, I open that chakra. Amazing. Now I can start receiving. And then it's about trusting what your intuition is telling you and getting your brain being like, 
what is this, this? I love it, and I love how it's like tied in. I mean, how did ancient Egypt know this stuff? It's unreal. They were not of this world. They weren't of this they world. They were, they no. were. But how does the realm. Vatican know? That's what I want to right. know. Right, and how all of the trails know? of the light and the halos, yeah. and it's so cool as we learn more, it's gonna tie in every religion. Thank you, Ronnie.